grow older gracefully by gardening? Who would ever have thought that? But we're going to try and see if this thing works. As we get, guess, as we get older, we might feel like we're going to try to give up on a few things, but elderly gardening can be seem to be a little bit of a problem, but don't give up because uh, we, there are a lot of things that we can do that uh, will help us in our golden years, and they are getting more golden every year. So, uh, but anyway, you can stock your kitchen with vegetables and fruits. In case of senior citizens, the additional benefits of gardening become even more important than they were when we were younger. First and foremost, it's an excellent form of exercise, believe it or not. But studies show that even small levels of physical activity can extend lifespans dramatically, uh, as well as overall quality of, of your life. So it's uh, what can do better than to, uh, if you like gardening, to get out and do some exercise by getting out and doing exercise. Positive benefits associated with gardening as a senior just aren't limited to living longer or more fulfill, uh, fulfilling your life. In addition to the obvious benefits of being fun, sometimes it's not fun, but in financially smart gardening for elderly pays off in a number of different ways. Also, gardening reduces the chance of heart, to heart attack and stroke. This has been proven. In fact, 60 plus age group has shown to reduce the danger of heart attacks and strokes by as much as 30%, a big percentage, particularly when you get our age. But this was published by the British Journal of Sports Medicine. Hand strength and pinch force are improved. People who garden routinely find their hands are more dexterous and later in life than those who don't. And this study was done at Kansas State University. Also st stated it can boost boost our self-esteem, which, you know, hey, get out and plant a flower and harvest a flower and harvest some vegetables in the garden. Yeah, it makes you feel better. You don't have to go to the grocery store and pay $3 a pound for, uh, for tomatoes and that type of thing. So it's a stress reliever. Yes, it does relieve stress. One study done in the Netherlands found that when compared to other forms of relaxation, such as reading, gardening, was exceptionally good in relieving stress because it exercises muscles. And that, believe it or not, is one of the things that increases or relieves stress. You get out and say, hey, I've accomplished something today. Or I got a blister on my hand because I was working or something of that nature. Higher serotonin, uh, serotonin levels have been reported from regular gardening. Decrease in depression and anxiety, yes, because you succeeded in doing something. You accomplished something as, as someone who's older. I quit, I quit uh, cutting my yard three years ago, though. I'm turning that over to somebody else. But uh, <clears throat> the soil is filled with many different bacteria. One of them, Mycobacterium vacate, may act as nature's antidepressant. I never thought of that. So if you get out there and play in the dirt, you're going to be absorbing some of this through your skin and maybe a little bit that you might get in your mouth from, you know, wiping sweat off and whatever. But the soil is filled with different bacteria. One of them, <coughs> Mycobacterium vacate, may act as a, well, I've already told, told you that one. Studies done in London on cancer patients showed that those were given this soil bacteria along with their treatment had better quality of life during their chemotherapy. So it's something that uh, you, you, you wouldn't think of, of it happening because going out and gardening is going to get, get you some bacteria or some chemicals that is going to help you out. They were happier, more relaxed, had better cognitive function than those who didn't have the bacteria. So it's something to look, that you can look forward to. Dementia patients also benefit. <clears throat> Horticultural therapy helps patients to learn new skills. Yes, somebody who has never, never gone out and maybe done any work in the garden, and as an older person goes out and starts doing this, they, they uh, not acknowledge themselves in being able to do something, they're cognitive of, of the work that they've done and the results that they get. Helps improve memory, increases attention span, and I need that.
I'm beginning to get to the point where I don't remember things. Frustration, anger. Well, now, sometimes I don't know about the anger because <laughs> you can get real ticked off because of something that doesn't go right in the garden. Reaffirms a sense of responsibility and improves social interaction. This study lists many other side benefits for people suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's, which are equally f uh, uh, fascinating. And if it, that wasn't enough, it's, it's a rewarding type of thing because you say, I grew this, I did that. I'm putting vegetables on my table, I'm putting flowers on, in the containers. And if that, uh, not only do you have the pleasure of harvesting your own produce, you get a lift out of watching the plants develop and grow. I don't know about that, but I do get one rewarding when I go out and pick a tomato. <clears throat> it's significant enough that NASA encourages staff in the space station to grow plants. Did you know that? But they do. They grow plants. <clears throat> they find it reduces loneliness. It slows down the sense of isolation, and them folks are isolated, and decreases stress. Being aware of all the positive eff effects of gardening only provides further motivation for the hobby you already know and love, but as a senior gardener, knowing the right tips and tools make all the difference when it comes to making the most out of your garden health. You may not have the same strength or the flexibility that you had, no, because there are <laughs> things that I could do as, when I was younger that I don't even want to try anymore. But it doesn't mean you have to stop gardening because of that. Using the following tips will ensure your garden to stay lively for years. Use a trellis or a vertical garden to alleviate the need to bend or crouch down. I strongly encourage you to do this, because, not only because it helps to relieve stress and you're able to reach things a lot better, like uh, uh, you can even do landscape gardening, believe it or not, in your front yard by planting plants that climb over trellises and over arbors because you, you know, they're growing up, particularly say like green beans. Who would ever think of putting green beans in your flower garden? Not too many people. But what you can do because they're climbing up over the arch or over the trellis, they're easy to reach. They do have flowers on them, believe it or not. And once they get up and green, uh, you can't really, from the street, you can't tell the difference between a green bean and ivy or something that you may have growing on a trellis. Do the same thing with tomatoes. You can do the same thing with gourds, those type things. They can be uh, added to your landscape and be acceptable by people who may be uh, confusing, uh, well, this person I don't particularly care for because he's gardening in his front yard, vegetable gardening. but. They can be done that way. Use a trellis, a vertical garden. You can do this with tomatoes. I have grown tomatoes in containers that have grown straight up. Just keep them up off the ground. Build tall raised beds. Raised beds uh, can be basically on the, on the ground. They are on the ground. But they can be up six or eight, ten inches above ground level, which means that, that you can sit on the, on the rail and you're not having to get as far down as you uh, might be if you were just gardening in the, the regular soil. Sit on a stool rather than kneel or crouch down the ground level. Tools with longer handles work a lot better. You don't have to bend over as far. Avoid the hot times of day, sure. Uh, early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Make sure you drink plenty of water so you can stay hydrated. Wear lightweight clothes, long sleeve clothing. I learned several years ago, I have worn long sleeve co uh, shirts 20, 24 months of the year for 25 or 30 years, mainly because I was having problems with skin cancer. I covered it up and I didn't, I cut the, my, the problem that I had with skin cancer on my arms. I wear a hat, make sure, make sure that you, uh, it also helps kind of, prevent scratches on your arms and, and other places. Consider hydroponics. You can do that on the inside, maybe. Uh, depending, you have to have, of course, the right light. You have to have the right location. You have to have the right uh, place to where you can do this. Use colored tape to paint or brighten tool handles. If you tend to lose them in the, in the yard or in the garden, 
that kind of helps make them stand out, paint them a bright yellow or a bright orange, something of that nature. <clears throat> I wear sunscreen. Uh, I'm unfortunately, well, I don't know. I have never worn sunscreen that much, but some people who are really susceptible, I cover up most of my things, so I don't wear sunscreen that much. Alternate between easier and more rigorous garden tasks to give yourself periods of rest from work. Do a little bit at a time rather than trying to go out and do it all at once. In addition to the tricks above that we talked about, recommend pick plants that tolerate being left to their own device. You don't, that you don't have to go out and look at and take care of as much as uh, some other plants. Skip a day here or there if you want to, uh, but don't, choose, don't stop there. Include a few pieces of specialized equipment that make it more enjoyable and, and comfortable. <clears throat> By choosing the right items to garden, you can increase not only the time spent in the garden, but your personal enjoyment, and you might increase the garden's yield at the same time. Grow vertical, well, we just already talked about that. Vegetables such as cucumbers, melons, beans, able to grow as well on trellis. Somebody says, I, I talked about growing cantaloupe and watermelon on a trellis before. This is some group, I don't know if it was this one or not. How are you gonna grow a watermelon on a trellis? Now what you do, you let it go ahead and bloom. Once the, the, the melon or whatever it is, the cantaloupe or watermelon or whatever it is, is is uh, starting to grow and fill out. Take an old pair of uh, a hose or something of that nature, slip up over the melon and tie it to the framework. It will continue to grow and if it's in a hose or something of that nature, it will expand, that will expand and it continues to develop and will be fine. Then you can go in and cut it down once it, it's mature and it's just like it's been growing on the ground. It doesn't have to be on the ground. It can be six feet in the air. You need somebody maybe to uh, lift the watermelon for off there, but uh, it, it's, it will still work. Maintaining patrolling your crops to pests is easier, and you can do it while you're standing up instead of squatting and kneeling down. Comes to harvest, you can cut directly from the trellis and put it in a basket so you don't have to be bending over. Saves your back while you're stocking your pantry. Top of that vertical garden can be done almost anywhere you have a sunlit wall fence or fence. You can also do this, say, for apples and peaches and pears by doing a spalier. They just nail the wall, the limbs to the wall and, uh, and cut those off that are sticking out. So you, they grow against the wall rather than uh, on the, like a tree normally grows. Keep in mind that whatever structure you choose will have to be sturdy enough to support a watermelon because that thing can get up 20, 25 pounds maybe. Popular trick is to tear several, several garden, gardening planters. This can help to liven up the outdoor living space. Raised beds allow you to, to uh, work in the garden and sit on the rail instead of having to totally bend over. Strenuous tasks like weeding can be done. It makes it a lot easier by doing it that way. Your own, make you make your own out of wood is cheap. Well, it's not, not necessarily that cheap, particularly if you're going to be using something like uh, uh, some, well, you don't want to use a chemical, a, a, a wood that has been treated with chemicals. You know, a very, the best thing that you can probably get in this part of the world is uh, use some uh, red cedar because that uh, deteriorates and rots very slowly, particularly the heart and the red part. Uh, <clears throat> keep your bed to a width of two to three feet because you don't want to be stretching too far from one side of the bed to the other. If it's uh, four to five feet wide, then that gets to be a, a problem of having to, to stretch and, and reach and it may be exerting a little bit too much pressure in, in some locations. But if you're only two or three feet wide, then it's a lot easier to reach from one side to the other. You like to uh, what, plan out what you like to grow and build that uh, uh, raised bed for what you're going to be growing. And there are a lot of varieties of, of those beds that you can, can uh, build. If you need to make uh, the most out of your garden ground level, use a kneeler. 
Um, they're pads that can be built and uh, used in uh, as a picture or two on in the next on down a little bit that'll give you an idea of what you've got, what you can use. Soft padding for your knees. Further, furthermore, essential tools and necessities to make sure you don't search for a misplaced pair of shears or pack of seeds. If this isn't what you'd like to know, how about one of these? I've got one of those. It is a fantastic thing because you can kneel on it, then you can take it and flip it up. What's, what's up, you put it down and you can sit on it. And it's elevated. It's a great little thing. I've had mine for oh, eight or 10 years now at least. And it's, it works real well and it, it's comfortable. And if you're down on your knees like that, you can, you can see by his right hand, you can use that to help raise yourself off of your knees. It's a lot, it's kind of a, an assist in getting up. So it flip it over, comes a stool, sit on it. Handles can help support your weight, whether you're sitting or trying to stand, stand up. How about this one? <laughs> it looks kind of like a little tractor, but uh, it's uh, 360 degree that the, the seat on it will turn 360 degrees all the way around. It's got steel axles. The wheels are inflatable, so they, they roll a little bit better. Plus, the, uh, this thing comes back down and you can pull it instead of having to push it. You can pull it like a wagon, a kid's wagon. So it, it work, would work well. I don't have one of those. I'm sure that that's not an inexpensive piece of garden equipment you can use, but it's still, I thought it was right neat. <coughs> Age, just a number. Uh, somebody in here is, there's one in here that is a little bit older than I am, but uh, uh, we still are doing, doing pretty good. <coughs> As you get ready to plant your next batch of flowers or harvest your next crop or vegetables, don't let your age let them know what, not the, the seed pack, how, how old you are because it may not come up if you think it's too old. Knowing your benefits uh, help motivate and encourage you. Elderly garden is good for your body and your mind, plus other benefits. It's good for your stomach as well because you're able to fill it a little bit. Next time someone tells you too old to garden, and of a bite of your delicious harvest and let the priceless reaction. So, so anyway, following some tips to make gardening easier. Digging and weeding is easier if you keep your beds narrow and accessible from both sides. Use adaptive gardening tools like long handled trowels and forks. Some tools are easy to adapt, maybe even by yourself. Save money, grow plants from seed. Uh, you might have a few left that you can either give to somebody or sell so to someone. Mix fine seed with sand makes it easier for you to sow. Some people have always told me that they've had problems try us trying to plant lettuce seed. I grew up on a farm. Have you ever seen tobacco seed? We used to grow tobacco. Tobacco seed is like meal or even smaller. So we had long beds that were 50, 60 feet long but we had a, a pack of seed, which just, you know, it was just a little sack about so, so wide, so long, and it had thousands of seed in it. Well, how are you gonna spread that over a 500 square foot piece of ground? Mix it with a little bit of just plain cornmeal. Just mix it up, or sand, either one, one would work fine. Put it in, put all that seed in a cup of uh, sand or a pint jar or something of sand. Mix it up real well, and then you can just spread it along. You don't have to, to try to count out the seed or, or anything of that nature. <clears throat> Use adaptive gardening tools. Uh, save money, grow plants, mix fine seed with sand. Okay, I've already gone through that. The cheapest and least physical way to grow fruit and vegetables and flowers are growing from seed sown in the place you want them to grow, or like me, I'll, I grow them in containers, which is not that hard. Your mobility problems, don't restrict your traveling, shopping, buying seeds in pots, it's easy. Keep the seedlings watered and watch them grow. Upside planting, low maintenance plants, do low maintenance plants if you don't all can find them. Is they do make garden maintenance easier, downside it restricts choice, maybe all year color. If you're not over the fussy type, bulbs can change. <clears throat> Cottage garden plants, herbaceous plants, this is basically for flowers, it's not for vegetable gardening. 
for reappearing again the next spring. Long dry spells, water your garden. It's time consuming, but if you have a disability or bad back, it makes bending. Use a watering can if you don't have a large space. If you have a large space to water, of course, use a, a, a hose will do that a lot better. Six gardening tips for gardeners with limited mobility. Raised garden beds. They, you can sit on the, re on the rails of that uh, raised bed and reach from side to side. Use lightweight tools. Don't use the over the guy who is out there 25 or 30 years old using the, the large heavy equipment. No, you don't need to use that. Most of the things that we can do with are small hand tools <coughs> and that, that's fine. Plenty of accessible shade areas. That's another important thing. If we have uh, uh, beds uh, that are out in the sun, make sure that you have some place that's shady next door because oh, I'm getting tired. I think I'll go and sit down and rest a few minutes. Well, I have a shady spot where you can go get a, a Coke or a glass of iced tea or something of that nature instead of having to uh, or go back in the house or something of that nature and come back out and get uh, uh, hot and wet again. Have stable chairs spread around the garden. Ensure water is available near container planted plants and seed beds. Ponds are, are nice, but they require a lot of maintenance, so I would stay away from ponds. Attend to any cuts and bruises or insect bites immediately, yes because as we get a little bit older, things slow down as far as healing is concerned. It may take uh, what used to, when I was 20 to 25 years old, may take three days to heal up and, and cover over. It may take a week now. So make sure you take care of those things uh, as soon as you can. <clears throat> Be careful when you're using power tools like hedge trimmers. Secure gates and fences if you tend to have a little bit of uh, a memory loss or if you're having a severe problem, if you have someone that's working with you, make sure that they do that so that some people have been known to wander off. We see them t constantly on TV. So and so and so and so was seen two days ago and he's disappeared. So if they had been maybe working in the yard or in the garden and had the gate been locked, then they wouldn't have been able to, to wander off. So I, d I don't like to get into those type of situations, but it's a fact that does happen. <clears throat> Ensure that paths and walkways are flat and non-slip, don't have a lot of um, uh, large rocks in them or uh, something that, that you might trip over, and warm up before gardening and take frequent breaks. That's one of the main things. Prevent sun exposure by working in the garden early in the morning or late in the afternoon like uh, before 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning and after 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon and if it's midsummer after 6 or 7 o'clock. Drink water or juice, don't go out and drink a beer. <laughs> it may be what you want, but it, it tends to uh, dehydrate you a lot more and uh, water will do a lot better. Wear protective shoes, lightweight, comfortable clothes, Cover the exposed skin like I wear long sleeve shirts. You've never seen me in a shirt shorter than the, what I've got on. Uh, hat and gardening gloves, store equipment safely. Hopefully, it's been of help. Anybody got questions, I'll be happy, more than happy to try to answer. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here. And I hope I answered a question or two. So, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.